Hey, I'm Audrey Hope. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Hope for Relationships. I am the Soul Love Healer. And today we hear from June from Sedona, who wants to know, how can you tell if someone is lying? Please join me. Healing is so unbelievably simple. You do what needs to be done, and that's it. Over. Problem solved. Hey, thanks for joining me so we could heal all our issues from the deep level of the soul. June from Sedona tweets, There has been so much lying and deception in the world. There has to be a quick way to really tell if someone is lying. Can you help me decipher liars fast and easy? Yes, June, wouldn't it be amazing? if we could tell right away if someone is lying. Well, of course we know the eyes are the window to the soul and then the heart always knows the truth. But we need another system, like we need to look to the experts and to the FBI to find out practical ways to tell really if someone's lying. Now, there's no surefire way. Even a lie detector test is only 60% accurate. This show is about things we can look for and how we can really put the facts together to see if someone's lying. Now the fact about human beings is that we are the most expressive animals on the planet and we have about 10,000 facial expressions. The truth is that we have two languages, nonverbal and verbal, and our brain, the neocortex, is known as the intellectual brain, but it's the lying brain. And the limbic brain is known as the holy grail of the body because it is the most honest part because it actually gives us what is called tells, body tells. And this is through gesture, through movement, through touch. We have to become an expert on nonverbal communication so that we can really read what people are thinking. You have to begin to get behavioral markers which is begin to see the individual things they do. To begin, we have to observe because people see, but they don't really observe, and that is Sherlock Holmes. And we need a tapestry of details because if people tell lies, they will do things in succession. So we have to start looking for facts of what they do. We have to establish the tells early on, and that's called baselining, to get a baseline of where someone is, and then to see what happens. Do they change? So you get the read. And usually, the first thing you feel is usually right on. The general stuff about truth tellers is that we are so comfortable when we tell the truth. We move around. We feel great and easy, and there's nothing to worry about. And we take up a lot of space. People who tell the truth take up a lot of space. See? They just feel really good and there's nothing to worry about. Edward Hall studied space. Spatial imperative. People who are confident take up more space. Now there must be synchronicity in between what a person does and what a person says. I didn't kill him. See the pleading? My gestures are not in sync with what I'm saying. Truth tellers are always in sync. And truth tellers touch a lot. They move their hands a lot. And they're very expressive. And actually, if you want to be a good speaker, it's good to move your hands a lot. General info about liars. When we are guilty, we are very uncomfortable. And what does the limbic brain do? Try to do things to pacify our uncomfortableness. We will do micro gestures, which is to touch, play around, do things, anything to pacify ourselves. Neck touching, rubbing the forehead, rubbing the temples, stroking the back of the head, touch the face, chew gum, lick lips, play with the hair, massage the earlobes with the thumb, strike the beard, talk to oneself, tap a pencil, touch your nose, playing with your earring, touching your lip with your finger. So these are the micro gesturing that we do to pacify ourselves. We also freeze when we lie. We stay still, we move the arms in, and we try to protect ourselves, we try to protect our heart. That's a way you can tell if someone's lying. And what will a liar do? They will misdirect and turn the attention on you. They will try to make it about you. So beware and watch for that. About speech, this is a really good way, you know, we could even see the proof in our politics when we watch the news. These are the things to look for. So the pace of speaking, is it slower? They pause a lot, hesitate, uh, yeah, uh, stutter, uh, 
delay, buy time, uh, yeah, uh, 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 repeat the question. What did you say? Oh, could you explain that? Do they speak in a monotonous tone? Do they change their pitch? Does it raise up from normal, get softer? Or a liar has very difficult time speaking because the body nervous system decreases saliva during stress. So there's more difficulty in speaking. Now the words, overcompensating, overperforming, too much information, stretched out sentences, long sentences, mispronunciations. And here's the thing, liars leave out pronouns. They leave out I, me, mine in conversation. Watch out for that. In their subject matter, very few details. And they never change their details. They say the same thing over and over again. And there's a lot of fluff. And another thing liars do is they talk a lot about other people. And here's a trick. If you want to know if someone's lying, you could say, where were you last night? Oh, do you want to go get something to eat? How they answer you. If they say, oh yeah, let's go to the restaurant across the street and they forget your first question, that's the way you could tell. It's a little trick. If they want to go back to the question and answer where they were the night before, then they're a truth teller. I want to go through the body parts, but I want to tell you a secret of all secrets about liars and truth tellers. The lower down in the body we are, the more honest we are. Feet, as it rises up, we lie more. The feet are the most honest part of the body and it goes up from there. This is where we lie. Let's first look at the eyes. Eyes are the window of the soul. You think about a baby. When a baby's born, their eyes open. That is a sign of happiness and truth. When there's constriction, when there's you know, trying to tighten up the eyes. Even blind people will go like this when they hear something that's uncomfortable, even though they can't see because we do that when we don't like what we hear. So the constriction is a good body tell. When we blink, we're very nervous. A lot of eye blinking is a sign someone's lying. Watch the direction of the eyes. This also depends if you're a right-handed person or a left-handed person. But I'm a right-handed person, so it goes like this. The left side recalls the memory, and if I look to the right, I'm making something up. So the left side, I'm recalling something. The right side, I'm making something up. That's very general, but it's something to look for. And a gaze, a very strong gaze. That's a liar. The nose, something called the Pinocchio effect. When we lie, chemicals are released and the nose itches. So if someone's doing that, that a lot, if they don't have a cold, uh, you need to beware. <laughs> of their lying. Also breathing. It's something called shock blushing. When the involuntary nervous system hijacks all our surface vessels and moves blood to our larger muscles to prepare for attack. Also when we breathe deeper and our breathing intensifies, something's going on, we're lying. Now the mouth, very revealing. You can't really fake a smile. I mean, when you're smiling and it's a real smile, it's upwards. A fake smile is sideways. You're only using muscles of the mouth rather than the face. And when you have a down mouth, that's real grief. It's really hard to mimic real grief. And the lips, such a reliable indicator. When you bite your lips, you're insecure. When they're tight, you're lying. When they purse, you disagree with what is being said. Now the tongue is also a body tell. If you rub your tongue back and forth, you're trying to calm yourself. If you're jutting your tongue, you're trying to get away with something. And if you're putting your tongue between your teeth without touching it, you have got away with something really big. And if your mouth is dry, something is really bothering you. Now the neck. The neck is rich with nerve endings. And when stroked, this is fascinating, when you stroke the neck, you reduce your blood pressure. It lowers your heart rate. So the greater the stress, the greater amount of facial neck stroking. And what do men do when they get nervous? They touch their necks. It's called ventilator. They pull the fingers between their shirt and they pull the fabric from their skin. That's what men do. Women will play with their jewelry. Now the torso, this thing called chest shielding, you're holding your chest, it's because you're trying to protect. Your brain wants to protect something and you use your arms as barriers. Men will fix their ties. That'll be their way of doing it. Now the arms. The truth is we pay more attention to the face, but the arms give solid cues. There are nothing our hands do that is not directed by the subconscious. They are reactive like our feet and legs. And when we're lying, we restrict our arms 
and we pull them in. And if you want to tell if a child is in trouble, the child will arm freeze around the perpetrator. If you're trying to find out if a child is abused in any way, they will lock their arms. When we are very animated, we tell the truth. Now, our stance of authority, we are confident when we spread, as I said, use a lot of space, but if we have a regal stance, we're gonna take up a lot of territory. Now, if I put my hands behind my back, I'm feeling higher than you. Again, back to the hands. The hands are controlled by the limbic, so it's honest. You can see hands as being the honesty, if you wanna look at someone telling the truth. And effective speakers use the hands. If you're stressed, the hands will be rubbed. You'll rub and you'll try to wring your hands. If there's sudden hand changes, watch for that. Something's going on. When you hide your hands, you're being deceptive. Liars keep their hands behind their backs and they hide their palms in their pockets or they cross their arms to hide their hands. Now a jury, this has been studied, doesn't like it when witnesses hide their hands and they wanna see the lawyer's hands and they hate when the lawyers hide behind the lectern and they hate pointing. They find that very offensive. Now, another thing that's really fascinating is the thumb is the most powerful finger in the body. It conveys dominance and power. It can tell who's struggling and who's not. If your thumb is out of your pocket, you have a lot of confidence. If your thumb is in your pocket, you're very weak. And if you cross your arms with the thumb upwards, you're defensive, but you want to appear cool. Now, this position, is the most powerful position. It's called the church steeple. People of a lot of power will do this with their hands. That's someone who knows what they're talking about. To finish off as we're down in the most honest part of our body is our legs. Our feet stay in the direction we want to travel. Okay, so a lot of times the FBI will give you a room and there's no furniture because they want to look at your feet. They want to see what your feet are doing. Okay, where are they pointing? Are they turning to the exit? And custom officers at the airport will look for people who's feet point to the exit. That means they're concealing something. That's a short body tell. Now, if someone is touching their feet or legs, fixing a shoe strap, straightening a pant leg, pulling lint, that's a sign something is going on. And if you put your palm on your knees and you slide, something's gonna go down, okay? And if your legs are under the table, if you can't look at legs, look at the shoulders. See if they're moving up and down. The shoulders will be able to tell you what's happening. And the mood of feet, if you're happy, they're called happy feet. It bounces, toes point. And if it's negative, there's a kicking and your feet are battling. Something unpleasant is going on. If you don't like the person, you switch legs to make a barrier. So June, I hope this system helps you to begin to read people and to see honest body tells to see if someone is really lying. And we need that in today's times. So thank you for your question. I'm Audrey Hope. This is Hope for Relationships. Thank you for joining me. If you have a question, you could write to me on my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter. The links are in the description box below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so we can heal all our issues from the deep level of the soul. I'm Audrey Hope. Thanks for joining me. Hey, if you like my videos, I hope you do, then subscribe and click. Are you gonna click? Come on, click here now, let's go.